Alright, hey guys, FiddleFaird here, and welcome back to another Manga First Take. So, I haven't seen you in a while. It's been a while. I've still been reading manga, and I've got something I want to talk about. So today, we're going to be taking a look at Welcome to the Ballroom. And so, this is one of those things where it's reminiscent of, of Food Wars and Me for a Way, where it's like, okay, how can you take something like as exciting as cooking food and make it into some epic battle showdown shonen manga, you know? It's, it's one of those things where uh, sometimes I marvel at um, authors' abilities to create these stories around subjects that aren't traditional. And I think that's something manga really does well sometimes. And that's where Welcome to the Ballroom comes in. So I've done a review before of another sort of ballroom dams type series and that was called Let's Dance a Waltz. And so I had a lot of issues with parts of Let's Dance a Waltz. Um, first of all, the beginning of it was interesting. Um, the end of it was mm, crap. So I didn't, it was only a three volume series. It was kind of okay. It was kind of that mm, blah. If you like dancing you could read it but that was there was really no other reason to. Now with Welcome to the Ballroom Anybody can pick this thing up because there are so many things about it that I just enjoyed so thoroughly. And so we'll kind of start with the characters. So we basically have our, our main character, Fujita. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I'm not Japanese. I don't really know how to say it. But anyway, we'll go with that for now. And so he's kind of this kid um, in middle school. Or is he in high school? I actually think he's in high school. And so he really doesn't know what he wants to do in life. He doesn't really have that one thing where he's really, like, can say, I'm good at this. And so he feels sort of lost in a sense that he doesn't really know what he wants to do and he's kind of having trouble. And so he's also um, in this unfortunate role of kind of becoming this goat or this gopher. And so he kind of lets people push him around. He kind of lets people dictate what he does. He's, he's slightly bullied, but he's not bullied extremely because he kind of just does what people want him to. And so we start off with him getting bullied, these kids asking him for money, he ends up getting noticed by this guy on the street that helps him out, and then this guy brings him to a dance studio, where they kind of are pushing, they force him to dance, and he meets another girl by the name of Shizuku. So Shizuku is someone he actually saw at school earlier in the volume, so we do know they go to the same school. And so she is someone that um, is very skilled in dance, and obviously been doing it for a long time, and she immediately doubts his motivations for why he's there and why he's even bothering with this. She's like, you know, this isn't a joke, this isn't for fun, get out of here if you're just going to be a pervert or be weird. And so he's kind of dejected, but he watches some old tapes of dance, ballroom dance competitions, and it pretty much like awakens something, I guess you could say in him. It's like the first thing he's really ever been really passionate about. And so it's basically from here we start this sort of traditional shonen type character that starts on the bottom and is not very weak and like rapid, rapidly starts kind of progressing. So it's very obvious that he has some skill in dance, even though some of the people at the dance studio sort of doubted him. Um, he kind of said he wanted to go pro and he's obviously already showing those flickering signs of being really good. And even Shizuku has sort of like slightly noticed some of these as well. And I really like the character interactions to, um, the two share. Um, it's one of those things because Shizuku is an amazing dancer and she already is is like somewhat established um, in the world of competitive dance but she has a really I really like her personality and the way they fit each other because he's sort of a sort of more laid back more of a not really a nervous guy but sort of just a I don't really know if this is my lane kind of thing and so he's really putting himself out there for the first time and you start we've already kind of been introduced to what I guess you would call sort of like the big rival um, it's this guy that he's the best in Japan, he's going to go international, um, he's actually Shizuku's partner, which totally would happen in all of this. And so she dances with this amazing guy, he's just got amazing ability, and so our main character has raw ability, but he really hasn't had time to really refine any of it yet. And so we have a really nice twist at the end of the series, because obviously this incredible dancer that is Shizuku's partner, um, he has some interesting things going on. He's, he's sort of mysterious. Um, he's a bit cold, not mean. You, he's not a character you actually dislike very much, but he's got that cold edge to him. 
And so anyway, that's kind of the basic setting for Welcome to the Ballroom. It kind of sets up this epic showdown um, of like of this, like these amazing, and this is where it comes back to the art. And so the art is fantastic. The art is very good. It's not really what I expected initially from this. Um, something like Less Sense of Waltz is just a shoujo series. It's about love and romance, and it's kind of got that that art style. Well, let's dance a waltz. Oh, let's da <laughs> let's dance a waltz. Welcome to the ballroom. Um, has a very, well, I guess I would say shonen esque art style. Um, it's very action oriented. The ballroom scenes look like they could be on par with any like fighting action anime scene you'd see in like you know some Naruto series. It seems very well drawn. The action is very well um, pictured, you know. And so that was one thing that really caught me from this. Um, the art style is very good, and so that really brought this from a really interesting story and just brought it to a whole another level for me um, for my enjoyment for the series. So, so far, Welcome to the Ballroom has been a very action-packed first volume that really does a good job of giving us a lot of character interactions, but also giving us a lot of mysteries about some of the characters. We don't really know all the motivations, we don't know all the backstories, and so it's lent plenty of room to be able to lead into that, and it has made you interested in finding that stuff out. These characters are interesting, it hasn't flooded you with characters, but there are enough characters where you're interested in their lives and where it's going. Um, I think the, the first volume ended off on a very intense cliffhanger that left me wanting more. It left me really excited for the next volume and wanting to find out what happens. So, um, if you are a fan of dance, um, if you are a even if you're not a fan of dance, if you just like action shonen manga with really good art um, and well-drawn characters that actually have some good character to them, um, then Welcome to the Ballroom, in my opinion, is a very... Uh, I definitely suggest going and checking it out. Um, I just thought I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, and this is released by Kodansha Comics. And it's actually a bigger print um, edition than a lot of the ones Kodansha actually usually releases. Here's like a normal Viz um, edition and then here you can see um, the Kodansha one. It's like a bigger one. It's sort of like, um, if you know Yen Press's larger editions, it's sort of something like that. So anyway guys, I do hope you enjoyed um, this first impressions of Welcome to the Ballroom. And uh, if you're interested, uh, go ahead and pick it up for yourselves and tell me what you thought of it. But anyway guys, I'm a Fiddle Ferret and I'll see you back on the Prowl next time. Bye!